In experiment number 10, we will learn about thinly achromatography analysis of analgesic drugs. Thinly achromatography, or TLC, is a technique for separating different compounds in a mixture. The separation relies on the differences in the interactions of each compound with a stationary phase. We often use TLC as a method for qualitative analysis of a mixture. In this lab lecture, I will give you the background introduction on chromatography. But there are several types of chromatography out there, so you can read up on column chromatography. We often use that in the lab, so that is written in technique number 19. There's information on uh, gas chromatography that's in the lab manual as well, at the back of the lab manuals in the technique section. So you can read up more about gas chromatography as well. Okay, but be sure to uh, read up on experiment number 10, that is the lab procedure for this week on uh, thin layer chromatography on analgesic drugs. Okay, if you're interested in uh, drug discovery and formulation of drugs, you can read up a short essay on uh, drug discovery that is written in the lab manual. So what is chromatography? Well, chromatography is basically a separation of chemical mixtures. And we often use chromatography in many life science industry. If you look at pharmaceutical company or even in academic labs, we often use TLC as a method to identify the compound of interest from uh, impurities. Right? You want to identify impurities and isolate this compound before you move on to the next step of the synthesis or developing this compound of interest into a drug, right? So you need to apply chromatography and the cheapest and easiest way to do is through a TLC method, okay? For example, looking at a food industry, well, the food that you're eating, is that covered with uh, impurities, toxic impurities, or is that mainly chemicals? There's so many chemicals added into the food. What are they? So if you want to determine those uh, chemicals, you need to apply chromatography, right? If you look at environmental study, for example, to identify uh, small amounts of uh, pollutants in uh, water, soil, or air, you can use uh, gas chromatography for that, okay? For gas chromatography, it can take a microgram amount of sample and it can identify all the tiny pollutants in the environment. Okay, if you look at uh, biochemistry, the field of uh, biochemistry, a creation of vaccine, right? Recently we developed um, what COVID 19 vaccine. So, how do we purify all these antibodies or how do we separate mRNAs? We need to figure that out, whether this particular antibodies is effective or does it have side effects because of so many impurities in the antibodies, right? So in order to do that, you need to apply chromatography, right? It's, it is uh, widely used in uh, biochemistry as well. If you look at um, crime scene, forensic lab testing, to analyze blood and DNA and close samples, very small amount of samples, you can apply gel chromatography for that, okay? So you notice that there are so many industry that uh, use chromatography. That's why we're learning about uh, chromatography today, okay? So the basic principle of chromatography is that a separation of mixture distributed between the two phases. So one is stationary phase and the other is mobile phase. So in the stationary phase, that means something cannot move, right? Stationary phase cannot move. So it has to absorb all the molecules or bind to all the molecules onto a stationary phase. So we call this TLC plate here, it's a stationary phase. So basically TLC means thin, right? Thin layer chromatography. TLC plate is made of uh, a plas plastic backing coated with a, a thin layer, a thin spray layer of uh, silica gel, right? Silica dioxide. So this silica dioxide can bind, uh, absorb all the molecules and mixture onto the plate. 
So if you spot your sample at the bottom, right? if you have a mixture and spot them, and let the TLC plate dry, and later put the TLC plate into a beaker, which has a mobile phase, in this case, for example, organic phase or normal phase, mobile phase has to move. Right, it, this, the solvent slowly travel up the TLC plate, and as it travels, it will push some of the compound away from the mixture. For example, this yellow dot here, it will travel along together with the mobile phase, and the gooey mixture is left behind. So that's how the yellow dot is separated from the green mixture. Okay, so in an organic lab, we will use either hexane, dichloromethane, or ethyl acetate uh, organic solvents as a normal phase. Okay, so we call this uh, solvent as mobile phase. For uh, some time, uh, we use aqueous mixture, uh, such as acetonitrile, water of methanol. If we have very polar molecules, um, we often use uh, this little polar, more polar solvent, okay? But for stationary phase, uh, we often use silica gel or silica dioxide, which is the which is highly polar. Okay, so it has to be more polar than the organic solvent. If we don't have silica gel, sometimes we use alumina. This is also very polar, but we don't often use alumina in the organic lab. We just use silica gel. Okay. So let's look at uh, stationary phase in detail. So stationary phase is silica dioxide. So if you look at the functional group of this silica gel, it has a SI, silica with a hydroxy group. We call this a silanol group. This uh, silanol group is very polar, and it can do hydrogen bonding or dipole-dipole interactions with the molecule. So that's how they um, adsorb onto the TLC plate or hold on to the polar molecules. Okay, Polar molecules will hold on to it interact with the silanol group and separating these from uh, less polar molecules. So less polar molecules will not interact with or least interaction with the uh, silanol group. Okay. For example, if you have um, a compound one and two mixture in this beaker, red and purple, you spot some of these sample onto a stationary phase. Okay. Let them uh, absorb onto the plate and let it dry and then you later apply a mobile phase, right? As you apply mobile phase, uh, compound one, which is more polar, or it has more interaction with silanol group, will adhere, adhere or adsorb onto a stationary phase. As the mobile phase moves through or across the plate, okay, it will carry the purple compound forward, right? Together with the mobile phase, and then compound one will get left behind. Okay, compound one also move, but it move, uh, it moves very slowly. So over time, the distance between compound one and the compound two gets separated further and further. Okay, that's how the separation works on a TLC plate. Okay, interaction with the silanol group, whether it's more polar or less interaction, less polar molecule move forward. Okay. So before we go on to uh, TLC chromatography, I want to recap on whether the, if the compound is, how do you know if the compound is polar and nonpolar molecules? Okay, sometime chemical, uh, I mean chemistry 251 uh, lab is ahead of the lab lecture, I, I mean ahead of the lecture, so it's good to have a brief overview on polarity of the molecules, okay? So TLC is basically liquid chromatography, and uh, compounds are separated based on polarity and hydrogen bonding. So what is nonpolar or what is polar? So if you have nonpolar molecules, nonpolar means you have an uh, equal share of electrons. If you look at diatomic uh, molecule like O2, H2, N2, there's an equal share of electrons on each side. Or if you look at a hydrocarbon a molecule like methane, the dipole on each side, they cancel out, right? It is pointed towards an electronegative carbon atom, but they cancel out each other. So this 
methane become nonpolar molecules. So if you look at uh, polar molecules like hydrogen fluoride, one side is partially positive and the other side is partially negative. And all the electrons are drawn towards more electronegative atom, which is fluorine. So it has a dipole moment and this uh, molecule become polar molecules. Okay. Uh, another example is water, which is very polar. If you look at the structure, geometry is bent, right? So basically, water is bent molecule, and the electrons are attracted towards a more electronegative atom, and it's partially negative, and hydrogen is partially positive, and the dipole, they do not cancel out each other. So the electrons are shared unequally, right? Distributed, but unequally. So we call this polar molecules. Okay, if you look at um, functional groups and polarity ranking on this table here, if you look at amide, right, has NH2, acid, alcohol, these are very polar molecules, and they can do hydrogen bonding with the silanol group, right? For, for example, if you look at this acid, right, um, oxygen, oxygen can interact with hydrogen, oxygen on this silica can interact this uh, acidic, uh, I mean, uh, carboxylic acid here, acid here with the hydrogen. So they can make hydrogen bonding, which is very polar, and they will be left uh, behind at the bottom of the TLC plate, right? So more polar molecule uh, will not move very well on a TLC plate compared to the least polar molecule, which is alkane, ether, or ester. Right? If you look at these functional groups, they are less polar than um, amide um, functional group. Okay? For aldehyde and ketone, they are kind of right in the middle and they can do dipole-dipole uh, uh, -dipole interaction with the silanol group. So they are right in the middle. Okay? But they are more polar than the alkane group. Okay? So how do we prepare our TLC plate? So in the lab, you will be given um, two TLC plate, right? To prepare TLC plate, you need to have a pencil and a ruler, okay? You have to mark the origin and the sample lanes with pencil. So I would recommend maybe uh, draw a line, uh, maybe measure five millimeter above from the base of the TLC plate. You just draw a line five millimeter above. So five millimeter right here with a, a pencil and you have to mark the origin where you're going to spot the sample. Let's say A, B, and C. So A is going to be one of the component mixture, pure standard maybe, and B is a mixture to be analyzed and C as a, another component. So you need to mark the origin of the samples that you're going to spot, okay? So after you finish marking, you have to then apply the sample onto the TLC plate. So you use, you will use this uh, little glass capillary tubes here. Okay, you take some of the samples out and then uh, dot it onto this little ticky mark that you already prepared, right, with the pencil. So make sure that uh, uh, you label them and then once you apply some of the sample, make sure the sample is dry. We call this spotting. I spot the sample onto a TLC plate. Once it's all dried, you put the plate onto into a chamber that has mobile phase, right? Mobile phase is a liquid, has something it has to move. So mobile phase at in the, in the chamber already, and you put this plate into the chamber, and the mobile phase will push some of the compounds up the plate, right? We call this running the plate or developing the TLC plate. Okay, so this will be a TLC chamber. Okay, it will carry some of the compound up the TLC plate, some will be left behind. So once you have developed the plate, then you need to visualize the plate. Visualize the plate means we cannot see some of these compounds with the naked eye. You can, but you can see them under a UV lamp. Okay, you can see that under the UV lamp because um, some of the compounds have uh, have a fluorescence, uh, they can fluoresce under UV light, but the 
TLC plate will glow under UV light because it is uh, coated with fluorescent material, right? So once it's coated with fluorescent material, it will glow under UV lamp, and the compounds of interest will be dark against the uh, fluorescent, right? As the plate fluoresce, but the compound doesn't have a, a, fluoresc a fluorescing property, so it will become dark. Okay, so you circle all these dark little spot, that will be the compounds of interest or impurities. You can identify them. So from this picture, you will see one dot, black dot, okay, the for A and two dots for B and another dot as C. So basically you can identify B contain A and C, okay? And A is at the bottom, so it's likely more polar than the C, okay? So let's say, give you another example of TLC of the two component mixture. Again, you spot them. For example, if you have an unknown sample has both A and B, okay? You have an unknown given to you and you're given a standard as well. So st standard is A and another standard is B. So you spot them at the origin, at the bottom, and then you put it in a developing chamber and the mobile phase will push some of the molecules up the TLC plate, right? As it goes up, right, the, the unknown sample, you will see both A and B start to separate over time, okay? Uh, you shouldn't let the solvent travel up all the way to the top. You should stop at a certain uh, point. Okay, I would recommend again five millimeter down from top of the plate. Okay, you should stop at the certain point. You shouldn't overrun the solvent, you know. So you should stop and um, you will see uh, under UV lamp, you can see um, unknown A, unknown uh, samples has A compared to the standard A, it, it lined up together and then it also contained B. A blue dot and it, they line up together okay so from here from this TLC plate B is less polar than A right A is at the bottom B is on the top okay your unknown contains both A and B okay so after developing TLC plate always remember to report the retention factor of a component Retention factor is basically a measurement of a pure component A from the origin of a TLC plate, right? You are given a particular set of condition TLC and you need to uh, measure how far the component A travel from the origin in a particular setting, okay? So in order to do that, you need to measure the distance traveled by the solvent Again, from the origin, uh, origin, origin of the line at the bottom of the TLC plate, and then measure all the way to the top where you stop the solvent front. Okay, a particular mode that uh, distance you need to stop. So this distance will be distant travel by the solvent. Next, you need to measure uh, distance travel by the sol uh, by the component A. So again, starting from the origin and all the way to the middle of the dot, red dot here. So that will be distance traveled by component A. So if you divide distance A with the distance traveled by the solvent, you get the retention factor for component A. So whenever you do TLC or explain TLC of a particular component, you need to report this retention factor, okay? Another example is if you measure component B, again, from origin to the middle of the spot, the blue spot here, that will be distant B. Distant B divided by distance S is the RF value for component B. So always report the RF factor using decimal place, right? Two decimal places, okay? It's not a fraction. It doesn't have a unit, okay? You need to report RF values in decimal places. Okay, so what are we doing in the lab? 
Well, the goal of this uh, TLC experiment is to determine the composition of various analgesic drugs, right? So you will be given uh, four standards, four pure standards, and these standards, you're going to run TLC and compare with one of these unknown sample. So you will be given a crushed sample of uh, tablets, either Excedrin, Tylenol, Anacin, or BC tablets. Okay, so you don't know what you will be getting. So this will be your unknown analgesic drugs. Okay, but you have the standards to identify them. Okay, so you'll give first you are given standard compounds and a reference mixture. So the reference mixture solution is a combination of all four standards. Okay, so you go, you are given one TLC plate for the standards and the reference mixture. So you're going to spot them on TLC plate and place them in a developing chamber containing ether acetate with acetic acid, right? So ether acetate with acetic acid will be mobile phase, right? So the mobile phase contain a little bit of acid to ionize the aspirin, to suppress the ionization of aspirin so the aspirin can move uh, 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 along with the mobile phase. If you don't have acid, then the aspirin will start to ionize. So you need to supply some proton, protonated aspirin, and you may have, want to make sure all these compounds move along with the ether acetate. Okay, that's the reason why we added a little bit of acid. And after developing the plate, you will visualize the spots using UV light and calculate the RF values of the standard compound. Okay, so and then on the second TLC plate, you will spot some amount of unknown analgesic tablet, right? So you're going to take about 0.3 gram of this crushed tablets and dissolve it in 5 ml of ethanol or dichlomethane 1 to 1 ratio in a test tube and using a glass capillary tube, draw them out and spot it onto a TLC plate, right? TLC plate uh, will have unknown tablet and also a reference mixture which contain 1, 2, 3, 4, or 4 standards, right? Then you're going to develop the plate again, visualize with UV light, calculate the RF values, compare them with the RF values to identify the composition of the unknown tablet. Okay, let's say you, uh, one of the unknown has contained acetaminophen, right? It lined up with the reference mixture and the unknown has, um, has the similar RF value with acetaminophen. So with that, you can compare whether you can come to this little drugs bottle at the back or even in the front. They are written acetaminophen for Tylenol, maybe for even Excedrin, right? So you can compare them and look at the bottle and you can figure out what type of uh, analgesic drugs is uh, given to you, right? So using the composition, identify the unknown analgesic drugs. Okay.